Hello folks and welcome to the fifth lecture on the topic of the basics of elasticity in the geodynamics course. In this lecture we're going to talk about pure and simple shear in elastic materials. We have only one goal once again and in this case that is to look at the equations of pure and simple shear in terms of stress in elastic media. Now it turns out that um, Pure shear is a special case of what's called plane stress, and plane stress applies when only one of the principal stresses is zero. So in this case, there would be sigma one and sigma two that are some non-zero value, and sigma three is equal to zero. Pure shear is a special case of that plane stress scenario. And we'll look here at an example where we set sigma three equal to zero and have sigma one equal to minus sigma two as shown in the figure over here on the left side. So you can see sigma one here is vertical, sigma two is horizontal. They have the same magnitude and opposite uh, directions in terms of their, their orthogonal, of course, but sigma two is pointed out rather than in to this cube. And note the coordinate axes in this case are such that x is inclined uh, at 45 degrees and so is y in the opposite uh, direction. So in this case, on the left side, with an angle theta of 45 degrees, that's a, the angle between the principal stress axis and the coordinate system, we see that um, sigma xx is equal to sigma yy is equal to zero. That comes from these normal stresses um, offsetting one another. And then our sigma xy in this case is going to be equal to sigma one and you can go through and demonstrate that for yourself if you'd like to. Um, I'm not going to do that here. Now from the equations of plane stress, which um, I'm not going to show the sort of derivation of those, but you can take the equations that apply for plane stress in elastic material and what you'll find is epsilon one, the maximum principal strain is simply one plus Poisson's ratio, one plus nu, over Young's modulus E times sigma one. And since we know sigma one is equal to sigma xy, we can plug in sigma xy here and set that equal to minus epsilon two, the minimum um, or the, well, what would normally be the intermediate principal strain, the minimum here. Now similar, um, to the stresses in terms of having this 45 degree uh, offset between the coordinate system and the principal strain axes, we can see that epsilon xx and epsilon yy are equal to zero, and epsilon xy is simply equal to epsilon one. That's just exactly the same thing we showed on the previous slide in terms of shear rather than stress. And from the equation on the previous slide, we can then plug in in place of epsilon one, epsilon xy, and we have our relationship then between the shear stress, uh, sigma xy and epsilon xy in terms of the elastic properties, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Now, we can recognize that the modulus of rigidity, g, is defined as being equal to e over two times one plus nu, looks a lot like this term up here, except for there's a one half out in front of it. Or in other words, we can plug in this thing and say that sigma xy is equal to this relatively simple uh, relationship, two times the modulus of rigidity g times the epsilon xy, the shear strain in that case. So it's relatively simple mathematically in this case of pure shear. And it turns out that this works for both pure and simple shear. Uh, because the difference between the two is simply a rigid body rotation. There's not a difference in terms of the, um, the stress and strain, the constitutive relationship. So that's it for uh, simple shear, pure shear and simple shear. As you can see, these lectures are relatively short and kind of to the point, and in the exercises we'll get a chance to apply some of these equations. Um, hang on for the one more lecture in terms of our pile of equation lectures. At this point, you can take your quiz and see what you've learned, and we'll come back for 
the final lecture on the topic of the basics of elasticity.